Hi everybody, this is Julian from RC. In this video, I'd like to introduce a new RC model called Blitz. Blitz is an open source model based on the Mistral 24 billion model. And thanks to additional training based on distillation from DeepSeek, Blitz significantly outperforms its base model. So we're gonna take a quick look at the model itself and then we'll deploy it on Amazon SageMaker and run some tests. Let's get started. Blitz was released yesterday and you can read about it in this blog post. As usual, all the links will be in the video description. So as mentioned, Blitz is based on Mistral 24B and we trained it further using tokens coming from uh, DeepSeq V3 distillation. Looking at the benchmarks, we can see how Blitz significantly improves on its base model, and particularly if you're looking at math benchmarks, you can see that Blitz is uh, definitely a much better model than uh, Mistral Small 3. Uh, you'll also see a nice bump on uh, MMLU Pro. So go and download the model. It's available on Hugging Face and you can run your own tests and make up your own mind. So now let's deploy the model on SageMaker and run some tests and see how Blitz is performing. As usual, I'm going to download the model from Hugging Face and uh, use the AWS LMI container to deploy it on a SageMaker instance, uh, in this case, a GPU instance. So obviously we need to import our dependencies Blitz is still a fairly small model. It's only 24B. Um, and uh, I like to use cost efficient uh, configuration. So I'm going to stick with the G6E instances. And those, as we probably know, uh, are based on the NVIDIA L40S GPUs. So in this case, the model is uh, too large to fit on a single GPU. So I'm going to use G6E12XL, which has four GPUs, which is more than I need. If you want to deploy this on uh, EC2, ECS, EKS, uh, maybe with uh, VLLM, let's say, uh, you could absolutely run this on two GPUs only. But we don't get this uh, option in SageMaker. So um, let's just say that, yes, we want to use that G6E12XL instance and then create the endpoint, right? And again, we do use the uh, LMI container, which is based on DGL serving, which is why you see DGL model here. So after a few minutes, the instance is up and we can start running some tests. So let's run my usual uh, pet food store name prompt until you get tired of it. And I'll have to write something else. So here we're running synchronous inference, generating everything and uh, printing out the result. Okay, as usual, we see the OpenAI uh, response format. And if we print the nice markdown, we see some good names. Bark Bistro, that's not bad. Okay, um, now let's look at uh, slightly more interesting <laughs> examples hopefully, and uh, run streaming inference. So here I want to write a marketing pitch for a new SaaS agenting AI platform called RC Orchestra. You may have heard about it. And uh, write uh, a nice email that I could send to customers. Okay. And we can see, as usual, that the model is doing well. Uh, it's adding emojis. We could get rid of that if we wanted. And we can see generation speed is, is really nice because here we're, uh, we're leveraging those four GPUs. And uh, of course, for a small model like this, it's gonna be quite fast. Uh, let's ask maybe a technical question on transformer models. And again, we see a well-structured, nicely detailed answer. And, and that model is really based for, uh, you know, general purpose tasks. And um, so it's a, it's a drop in replacement for, uh, for its base model, you could say. Uh, and at 24 billion parameters, it's still very, very um, cost efficient. So you can certainly get a lot done with this particular model. 
Okay, let's try the, uh, yeah, the motorcycle dealership email. Let's see how this one does. Passing some information on the customer. Let's see if this is used. And this is a nice email. Okay. And of course, you could tweak the prompts and, you know, you can just get a general sense of uh, the, the writing skills of the model. So now let's try something completely different. And that's that's a new prompt, right? So in this case, I took some uh, some code from Llama CPP. This is actually the uh, uh, one of the files for uh, for ARM CPUs, uh, where I'm doing some uh, matrix operations using uh, four bit kernels. And this is pretty hairy code, right? Definitely not your Python notebook kind of thing, okay? And and you know it's got macros and it's got uh, it's got lots of uh, functions that are obviously not included. So a lot of context is missing here. And this time I'm asking, okay, in the code below, can you analyze how neon instructions are used for vectorization? Neon is uh, an instruction set for ARM CPUs for uh, acceleration. Write a clear and compact summary. So, uh, let's give it a shot. Let's run this. All right. So that's a good summary. I mean, we should read it. The code employs Neon SIMD instructions to perform operations on multiple data points, enhancing performance for matrix multiplication. Okay, so it got that right. Um, there's a dot product function. Of course, when we do inference, we do a lot of dot products. And data types and data loading, etc., etc. So again, that was not a great prompt, but I guess the answer is... Uh, you know, it's pretty satisfactory. Um, it did analyze that code pretty nicely, although it is actually weird code. So there you go. Uh, looks like a very, uh, a very nice, cost-efficient, general-purpose model outperforming its base model. So go and download it from Hugging Face. Give it a try. Let us know. Ask your questions in the comments. And until next time, which is really just a few minutes from now, keep rocking.